who's going to share the word with us. Give him a massive round of applause. Thank you. So excited to be here. For the last two weeks, Pastor Lou and Pastor Tom shared so beautifully our series, Life Together. And I was thinking, what am I going to share? And God reminded me of my life. The life is started in Australia. So in 2010, we migrated to Australia. We had to leave a life behind. But during migration, before we came in, we Googled to see which church am I going to in Karimba and East Coast Church. So we decided to come to East Coast Church. 14 hours after landing, we walked into this church. And this church welcomed us with kindness. Just welcomed us as to who we are, as we are. But just as this church opened their hearts to us, we had to open ourselves as well. Madhu and I had to open our hearts to let people in. Madhu and I, we, Madhu, myself, and Stephen, Stephen was too. We were in a new country. The culture was different. And I wasn't even sure whether the things that we were saying were culturally uh, appropriate. Well, I still have that problem. <laughs> but we had to put ourselves out there. Now, was it embarrassing? Absolutely. Absolutely. And here's my favorite story, is one of them, is somebody invited us for lunch. And they said, Suresh, Madhu, Stephen, come for lunch and bring a plate. So I was telling Madhu, Maybe there's like a 20 people and they have only 10 plates at home. So maybe they said, bring a plate. <laughs> and the truth was that I was ashamed to ask. I think I probably asked Peter McGee. And he was like very kind. He said, that apparently it's not to be taken literally. It's like bring a plate means bring some food. Well, imagine I rocked up to this place with lunch with Madhu and Stephen and, you know, three plates and said, ah, oh, thank you for inviting us. And here's the three plates that you asked us to bring, you know. But, but the point of the story is when we talk about life together, it's reciprocal. While we want people to make room for us, we need to make room for people too. So my prayer is that you will open your hearts today for God to reveal what your part in life together is. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father God. Father God, I thank you for the opportunity to stand up here, Father God, and bring your word. I pray, Father God, that it is not my words, but your words, O oh Lord. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will work through me that your words will reach these people. Bless these people with your word, my God, in Jesus' name. Does anyone know what's the population of the world? 8.2 billion. 8.2 billion. But what's interesting is no two people have ever been found to have the same fingerprint. Now, in fact, in science, it's... The probability of two people having the same fingerprint is less than one in 64 billion, meaning never. So that's how unique you are. That's how God created you. And though God created you so uniquely, you were never meant to be alone. You were never meant to do life alone. That is not God's design. How do I know this? In fact, the whole creation story talks about it. The creation story starts with God creating us. In Genesis 1.26, God said, Let us make man in our image 
after our likeness. Let us make man, us being plural, us being unity, us being the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit together is the original and eternal community of love out of which we were created. God's design is never alone, but always together. In Matthew 18, 19, Jesus says, Again, truly I tell you, if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be given and done for them by my Father in heaven. Matthew 18, 20, For where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. I heard someone say most of the time in the New Testament, it talks about Jesus. Jesus is either having a meal, coming from a meal, or going for a meal. Jesus was a people person. He was always around people. In his letter, Paul uses a Greek word called alelon. Everybody say alelon. It means one another. Reciprocally. It occurs 100 times in 94 verses in the New Testament. In fact, of the Gordon Fee in one of his books writes, our interdependence is particularly seen in Paul's relentless use of the Greek word alelon. Everything is done alelon. Gordon Fee summarizes this for us like this. I suggest if you could take a photo of this slide or come and ask for notes, go home and read this because there's lots of scripture here. Gordon V summarizes like we are members of one another who are, who are to build one another, to care for one another, to love one another, to pursue one another's good, to bear with one another's in love, to bear one another's burdens, to be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another, to submit to one another, to consider one another better than ourselves, to be devoted to one another in love, to live in harmony with one another. Alelon. Next time we say one another, we say alelon. One of the most important ways we do life together here at East Coast is through connect groups and serving in teams. When we serve in teams, we get to know people, we build relationships. In connect groups, which are midweek meetings, we are discipled, we learn the word of God, we build relationship, not just within the connect group, but throughout the week. But it's not perfect. It was so encouraging when Pastor Lou shared that not even the senior pastor's connect group has full attendance. Not even Jesus had good disciples perfect disciples. They were quarreling. They were fighting. But we need to learn to do life amid imperfections. So it is okay for us to have some issues or some friction or not have a perfect group. So what does life together mean? Well, to be brutally honest, let me start with how life not together would look like. Well, life not together looks like me, my family, my job, I have time for no one. I'm consumed with what's going on in my life. Life not together looks like I come to church, I sit by myself, I engage with no one. Service finishes and I walk away and I think no one spoke to me. Life not together looks like, this is a good one. I come, I sit with my friends. I'll see a person by themselves. I haven't seen, I haven't said hello to them, but I continue to sit with my clique. I have coffee and I leave. Now you might say, I'll take a drink of water. Now you might say, yes, this is life together, doing with my friends. But for that person, you haven't contributed to do life together. 
So let's not just think. Let's also think outward. Pastor Mark, our founding pastor, preached years ago, which stuck with me, and he said, if, say he said, name two people who's not your spouse that you could share life with, share your deepest secrets, who celebrates with you uh, when you do well, but will also has the liberty to speak into your life when you're doing the wrong path. And that spoke to me because I didn't have anyone at that time. I didn't have anybody. How about you? But let's be realistic because sometimes you might not have everything in one person. So you might have to have to people, but pray, ask God, God, who can I do life with? Who have you shown me? Doing life together means it is just not you. It is okay to put up your hand when you need help. Some people are really good in giving. In, in helping other people, but they do not receive help. And I was like that. So I, reading Acts 20, 35, where Paul quotes um, Jesus and said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And I was thinking, am I depriving somebody of their blessing to give by always saying no? So it's okay to say yes. If somebody says, can I bring you a meal? Don't say, somebody else needs it more. Say yes. Say yes. Give an opportunity for other people to help you. Doing life together means not just waiting for people to come to you, but you go to them. If you feel isolated, you go to them. Be the pioneer, as Pastor Luz talks about. Be the pioneer. You go to them. A relationship is always two-way. It's a two-way street. Doing life together in a connect group is if you have a good a group, a group of 10, for example, and most of them are doing okay, but one person is doing it tough. It's okay for the group to get together and help that person who is maybe unemployed, who is going through uh, marriage difficulties, or who is going through um, uh, some sort of sickness. It is okay for us to get together with that person and help that person, not just meet with friends and have a meal. Doing life together means even when you are hurting, can you be a blessing to somebody else? Even when you are believing for a miracle of healing, can you pray for somebody? Even if you are hurting, will, can God still use you to be a blessing to someone else? Are you coming to church just for yourself? How about we say, let's go to church for others? How about we train our kids to say, hey, let's get up in the morning and go serve other people in church. How beautiful would that be? Come for others. We were created for community. Why did God save you? Why were you created? Look at the Ten Commandments. Four of them talks about us and God. But the rest of the six talks about us and others. It's all about community. God's greatest commandment, God's design is to love God and love people. What do you do when you love yourself? What do you do because you love yourself? Make a list, pray, do that for somebody else. C.S. Lewis says this, God is love, and that love works through men, especially through the whole community of Christians. God's love works through us. The person outside church has no idea about God. 
the only introduction they have for God is you. It's through you to bring his love to them. You are God's representative. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are his ambassador. You are the one who carries his love to the world that does not know him. And you carry the love of God so that people outside can taste and see how good God is. In John 21, Jesus says to Peter three times, if you love me, feed my lambs. If you love me, take care of my sheep. If you love me, feed my sheep. John 13, 35, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. End of your life, when you stand before the throne, can you honestly say, I have pursued loving God and loving man to the fullest of my ability? Can you say that? Can I have the band join me, please? I came across this quote called Christ Has No Body from St. Teresa of Avila, which made me quite emotional. It goes like this. Christ has no body but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands. Yours are the feet. Yours are the eyes. You are his body. Christ has no body now but yours. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, We pray, Father God, that we will be a church who is not self-centered. That we, be, we will be a church that is able to love others, Father God, in, the, in, in spite of their weaknesses, God. In spite, even though we are prickly, even though we might not be good company, but yet, Father God, help us to love others beyond their weaknesses. Father God, you came to this world to do life together because you wanted us to be with you in eternity. Today, if there is somebody here who hasn't received the love of God, if you are this person who God died for but you haven't accepted him as your Lord, you haven't received the love of God. If you are here, it's not a decision to be ashamed of, but of celebration. So boldly can you put your hand up and say, yes, I am that person. Cognitively, I understand, I don't understand what faith is, but in my heart, I know, I know it's true. Is there someone here today? God died for you that you might have eternal life. But if you want a private moment, I'll be standing to the left of the stage, to your right. And I'll be happy to pray with you. But for the rest of us, as the band plays this song, let's be a church 
that has the muscle to love one another beyond our weaknesses and if god has stirred your heart up today the team is ready to pray for you if you had a touch from god and if you are saying yes i've been busy I have no time i would love to make time for others but i have no time and if you in your heart are saying god i want to be your hands and feet i want to be that person god help me god use me to share your love to the world i would love to pray with you the team is ready and we can come forward and we can pray for you jesus
my dad was preaching, I, he, when he said the quote from St. Teresa, yours are my eyes, yours are my feet, yours are my hand, I was just reminded of we are ambassadors to the world. We're not of the world, we're of a higher kingdom. We're ambassadors, uh, there's a Bible verse in Ephesians, ambassadors in bonds. We're ambassadors to the world, we're evangelists, and we are called to share God's love with others. No one here can reach certain people except you. And God's gonna give you the courage, God's gonna give you the power to reach those people, to have the courage to just say one or two words about to them, to just share a tiny story with them because that's enough to save them. Charles Spurgeon was shaved by a shoemaker with no education. You, each and every one of us has the power to save others, to evangelize and to bring so much light, so much fruit to the kingdom of God. connect leader can you put your hand up please can we have people come around our connect leaders hand right up so we can see can we come around our connect leaders and pray for our connect leaders when we talk about life together these are the guys who are in the trenches. These are the guys who do life together. These are the guys who disciple. These are the guys who do life together with you in good times, in difficult times. And God, I pray for these people who have put their lives, their time, their effort and sowing to the kingdom of God in discipling as you said go make disciples Father God they are the examples they are making disciples Father God they are standing in community they are standing with people Father God even though they are suffering they pastorally care for those people God I pray for wisdom God, I pray for capacity. God, I pray for strength. God, I pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon them. That you will bless them, Father God. Expand their territories, Father God. Open the doors and windows of heaven and pour out your blessing upon them, O oh God. That they will have no room to receive. Bless these people. 
who have put themselves out open their homes welcome people host and disciple so that people of god can gather and do life together in jesus name we're going to linger in here for whoever want to but there's coffee in the fire and we close the service so you can go and enjoy and have some fellowship but if you want prayer the altar is still open and we'll be here thank you church Thank you.